Hello and welcome to the National Exhibition Centre at Birmingham. It's the second time in seven days I've been here. Last week it was for the Boat Life Live show and today it's for the Camping, Caravanning and Motorhoming show spread over halls one to five of the NEC. The whole event has sold out. It runs from today, Tuesday until Sunday. They're only selling tickets online. You can't get one on the door and they have completely sold out. It is already very, very busy here and there's a lot to look at. I'm particularly going to be looking at small uh, motorhomes and larger camper vans I suppose something with a shower in it and hopefully a fixed bed not necessarily intending to buy but it's the kind of thing I've got my eye on the visit didn't get off to the best start mind you as thousands of people arrived almost simultaneously and all wanting the free shuttle bus from the car park to the halls said bus being notable by its long absence Fed up of waiting after 20 long minutes, I set off on foot in search of the distant exhibition, joining a queue of adventurers who'd had the same idea. This proved to be a bad idea, since whoever set off first, it turned out, didn't know where they were going, but everyone else, including me, followed them, thinking they did. Thus began a comical parade through the NEC, up escalators and along travelators, from the furthest possible hall until at last, weak and in need of refreshment, we staggered down a set of steps and arrived outside the halls we were supposed to be at. There it is, the one in green. Time to flip out my press pass and see what's on offer. There was everything from a ton of VW transporter conversions to the tiniest caravans you could imagine. So tiny, you could almost pick them up and put them in your pocket, but still with everything you'd need. But there were even smaller ones still, mighty cute and able to be towed by the tiniest of cars. This one had been sent to a specialist for its funky interior. I confess the standard model was more to my taste and cheaper too, at about £16,000. If you really want to go small, how about a teardrop trailer like this busy bee? Kitchenette at the back and enough length to get your head down. Smaller doesn't necessarily mean cheaper though. Ouch at £20,000, though that does include a heater, awning and solar panel. My quest was for a van with an open living space, ideally a fixed bed and a bathroom. This VW Crafter had a very typical layout which I don't like. The table here makes things too cramped, even if removable, though it did have the fixed bed that makes life easier. At a hundred grand, it's got a high spec, but it's not right for me. Perhaps this Mervy Morello on a Ford Transit would work. It's got exactly the kind of living space I mean, more like a lounge than a dining room. At the back is a compact washroom. And down the other side, a kitchen. Ah, but no fixed bed. The saloon has to be converted each night. A shame, otherwise I rather liked this. On the Wild Axe stand, I spotted a van with bunk beds at the back. A useful space saver. Another of their vans had a welcoming lounge, although a bit tiny. You get the usual kitchen gear, hob, oven, grill, sink, microwave and a decent fridge freezer. Plus, the bathroom's closed off by a tambour door, which is nicely unobtrusive. Aha! A fixed bed at the back too. This van could go on my shortlist. But I'd like a shorter van, really, like this six-metre Westphalia Columbus. A full-size permanent bed, perfectly decent washroom, But drat, 
one of those living areas that's more dining than living. I want more of a lounging area for the evenings. Here's an even more compact van, only five and a half metres long. Nah, again, I don't like this lounge layout. They feel too cramped and formal. Plenty of storage spaces, though. Those are heating controls, I think. And the bed is an odd shape because of the shorter van dimensions. No, nope, this isn't right for me. Static caravans aren't my thing, but there were a few of them on display here, seen as I transitioned from Hall 5 to Hall 3. This was clearly where the big-name motorhome manufacturers hung out. I was hoping for some good stuff to see here. It was a bit of a scrum at times, though. My American viewers would laugh, but these are considered large motorhomes over here. If you've ever driven one down a British B road, you'll know why. I found this one odd. It's more garage space than living room. Speaking of which, this van conversion has a neat fold-up bed arrangement, so you can use the back for storage if you like. Even with the bed up, there's loads of room underneath. I was trying to find smaller motorhomes, but it was proving troublesome. Two of the main ones I'd hoped to see are no longer being made, damn it. At Christmas, over on my Cruising the Cut videos, I recommended a van channel called Jits Into the Sunset, and this is the modern-day version of the van they have. It doesn't have a fixed bed, but I still rather like it. There's a living area you can properly lounge in, and that's what gets converted to the bed. Behind, you've got a kitchen on one side, and the bathroom and cupboards on the other. I've always wanted this Pullman-style dinette on my boat, but again, it just doesn't suit me for a van. You can't slob around at night on that kind of layout. And while this rear saloon would be comfy, there's no fixed bed. Next up was this Auto Sleeper Nuevo. At last, a compact motorhome at less than six metres. I've always rather liked the look of these because they feel very open inside. The layout is a kitchen across the back as you come in. And on the left is the washroom, which has a separate shower and toilet section, so again it feels spacious. If you're thinking that basin will get in the way of showering, think again. The whole thing's on a hinged wall, which also means no soaking the loo with shower water. And when you're done, you just push it back. The living area is big and open. What they didn't show, and I later found out, is that the space over the cab can have a fold-down bed on it, so that could be perfect. Elsewhere, I wanted to have a peek inside this massive beast of a van, but I was foiled by a sign and a queue, so I just had to peer in from the rear, spotting not only this large garage space, but look, it's a double-decker with the bed above. In my quest for a fixed bed, I wondered what an over-cab solution like this would be like. I just worried that I'd decapitate the van under the first bridge I came to. Inside, it's as civilised as you'd hope, with a little kitchen and bathroom area. 
and even a second bed at the back, but the main attraction is this one, which looks very spacious. Unfortunately, the living space is this dining arrangement again. Perhaps the newest model from Chausson will be my dream. This is the X550, a coach built that looks a bit like a van conversion. I already knew before looking that this has a drop-down bed and possibly a living area I might like. But that's the living area and I don't know why, but I just didn't warm to it. Above what looks like the ceiling is the electric drop-down bed. Behind that is the kitchen on both sides. And a shower and toilet at the back. In the final hall, I found the only van that meets every spec. Compact, living area and drop-down bed. There is, of course, a catch. This is the ingenious Wingham 540, just five and a half metres long. Inside, the comfy saloon has the kitchen alongside. Up there is the bed, and the shower and loo are to the back, although the squishy fabric on the wall was a bit weird. The catch is the price, £92,000. But I've saved the best till last. This, as Olivia Newton-John would say, is the one that I want. It's the Auto Trail F60, and it's near perfect. Six metres long, compact kitchen at the back, but with everything you need. The bathroom is behind that with separate shower and loo. A very cosy looking living area, and what you think is the ceiling is a drop down double bed. Admittedly, it's an optional extra, but prices start at just £54,000. I have found my dream van. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.